The Arabian Peninsula sits in the center of the world enjoying an area worth 1.2 million square miles. On one side, it shares a border with the Red Sea that handles 10% of all global trade. The Middle East's two vital luck factors, its central location and its huge reserves of oil, make it an important player in global affairs. But if you travel back in time, the same Arab world might show a completely different tale. Completely covered with dunes, Arabia was a vast desert with little or no signs of life and a sweltering hot climate. The small native population lived a simple life grouped in tribes relying on fruits, dates, meat, and milk as the staple diet. If you compare that with the luxurious lifestyle of the present time, the difference is staggering. Central to the Middle East metamorphosis is Saudi Arabia, the de facto leader of the Arab world. Ever since becoming the largest exporter of oil, the huge inflow of cash has brought major architectural and commercial reforms. This has gradually improved the standard of living of its 36 million population. This progress can be evident from the annual World Happiness Report issued by the UN. In 2022, Saudi Arabia ranked 25th out of 156 countries on the World Happiness Index. In the year before, it was in the 26th position. So, how did the ranking improve? According to the report, the country stood out in terms of GDP, social support, healthy life expectancy, freedom to make life choices, and combating corruption. Part of this success can be attributed to the kingdom's 2030 vision, which outlines Saudi's plan to become one of the most livable destinations around the world. Central to this vision is enhancing the quality of life by increasing green spaces, fitness, and leisure facilities. In a recent survey conducted in Riyadh, 18% of the respondents indicated that easier access to facilities would motivate them to exercise more. In line with public demand, Riyadh will be seeing four brand new projects, the King Salman Park, Riyadh Green, Sports Boulevard, and Riyadh Art. Let's talk about the most ambitious of them all, the Sports Boulevard. It's a linear park stretching up 84 miles from Wadi Hanifa in the west to Wadi Al Sulai in the east through Prince Mohammed bin Salman Road. With 50 plus sports facilities, the park is open to pedestrians, professional and amateur cyclists, and horse riders alongside art and culture enthusiasts. The project also includes a sports tower, a high-rise building featuring various indoor activities. The Sports Boulevard also offers 45 million square feet of green and open space sites covering more than two miles. This makes it the world's longest linear park. But Sports Boulevard isn't just limited to sports. It combines various cultural, artistic, and environmental opportunities. There will be a desert park of seven square miles, including event venues, a show piazza, outdoor museums, and movie theaters for recreational activities. In addition, some areas are carved out as investment zones, representing 25 million square feet of space. There will be many landmarks and public art installations that will enrich the cultural lifestyle in the city of Riyadh. To give you a basic overview, there are eight districts within the Sports Boulevard. Each district represents its design through pathways and trails, giving a unique experience. First up is the Wadi Hanifa district, measuring up to 18.3 miles. It has seven stations for cyclists that include rest areas, maintenance centers, and various investment zones. The district has pathways for both professionals and amateurs, along with pedestrian pathways and horse riding trails. Next up, we have the Arts District. As you might have guessed by its name, the Arts District will hold distinct areas for artists including workshops, exhibitions, museums, libraries, studios, art forums, conference halls, and other locations set aside for investment. It'll also have one promenade and one cycling bridge. As a customary rule, the art district, like the rest, will have a lots of green and open spaces for pedestrians and cyclists. Situated adjacent to the art district, we have Wadi Ali Hassan. This district serves both technical and sightseeing purposes. The area will be home to a water treatment plant and water canal surrounded by lush greenery. The best part is the sustainable use of water in the canal. The canal water is constantly recirculated, used in fountains, and for the natural cooling of the district. Shaded play areas for kids, a kayaking zone, multiple sports fields, and picnic areas form the distinct zones of this district. The water canal will add up to a length of two miles. 
The Linear Park's 4th District is dedicated to entertainment and fun. Known as the Entertainment District, it hosts an amphitheater, event sites, and a cinema complex for performances and interactive audiovisual shows. To make this district kids inclusive, several hillside playgrounds, parks, and open spaces are going to be built. If you think you've seen everything, well, you're wrong because we still have the Athletic District. You can't truly appreciate the might of this until you see the scale of sports options available here. With over 60 sports sites, it includes 16 football pitches, 18 covered courts for basketball and tennis, 12 courts for volleyball, and a venue for skiing. The iconic high-rise building, the Global Sports Tower, will have courts for men and women surrounded by stadiums and training halls. The training hall accommodates enthusiasts of every type, be it jogging, golf, boxing, basketball, tennis, badminton, swimming, archery, or ice hockey. Lower floors will have a velodrome, including one underground next to the tower. In a bid to create a nature-oriented environment, Sports Boulevard dedicated an entire district to plant cultivation. The Eco District features areas for cultivation, including several fields for greenhouses for seed development, agricultural products, and organic food production. Residential complexes will be built along with retail outlets, coffee shops, and restaurants. Residents will be educated on planting flowers, organic food, and environmental sustainability. But this is where the project gets crazier and beats other conventional parks you and I might see. In the southeast portion of this project, near King Khalid International Airport, is 17 million square meters of sandy areas. In a nod to the desert terrain of Saudi Arabia, a red sand park is planned which will cater to cyclists, pedestrians, horse riders, and artists. The design will incorporate a zoo spread over two square miles, a rural resort with different residential facilities, a visitor center, rest areas, and gathering points for cyclists. It'll have a distinctive landmark, a curved cycling track in the shape of a flower, gradually rising 164 feet above the ground to allow cyclists to enjoy the impressive view from the top. The biggest district of Sports Boulevard is Wadi Al Sulai District, stretching up to 32 miles from King Fahad Stadium in the south to King Salman Park and Bon Bon in the north. The Sulai Valley runs perpendicular to the linear park and is almost the same length. This district has several landmarks in its vicinity, Bon Bon Wild Park and Durat Al Riyadh, including pathways for cyclists, horse riders, and pedestrians. It has 11 service stations, including recreational areas and spaces for investment purposes. Some would say that this project is too ambitious to be realized, but with Saudi Arabia's history of colossal projects like the Neom, Red Sea Project, Kidia, Diria, and many more, the Sports Boulevard doesn't see much of a stretch. And you might have guessed already, this project is worth billions of dollars. It has an estimated cost of $23 billion to be funded by the government. In October 2021, the Sports Boulevard Foundation was awarded contracts worth $661.5 million for the construction phase of one. Sports Boulevard will encourage the citizens of Riyadh to follow a healthy lifestyle through exercise and participation in various sporting activities. But beyond this, the project seems to be a golden bird for the private sector. In 2019, when the project was launched, it was expected to provide production jobs followed by more service jobs on an ongoing basis. The Sports Boulevard Foundation signed an agreement with Ajdan Real Estate Development and Albilad Capital for the development of the private plots within the Arts District. This partnership aims to develop a diverse range of residential, retail, office, and entertainment spaces spread over a 215,000 square foot area. Just this year, Sports Boulevard launched an immersive cycling experience using a virtual cycling simulator. A number of these immersive booths will be installed in public places and offer the opportunity for people to socialize, exercise, and compete against each other whilst enjoying a new sport in an indoor environment. The cycling experience will consist of a virtual 3.2 mile ride, the equivalent of 10 to 15 minutes of cycling, that can be tailored to an individual's fitness needs. In the same year of Sports Boulevard launching, another eco-friendly adventure was revealed in Riyadh, the King Salman Park. Designed in a circular path, the park is a unique blend of Riyadh's topography and human innovation. Around 1 million trees are planned to be planted in the park, making it a green oasis. The park will also incorporate culture and arts with the construction of Royal Arts Complex and Visitor's Pavilion. 
Together, these mega projects are set to transform the face of Riyadh, making it a thriving metropolis with healthy citizens and quality living. Do you want an exclusive video on King Salman's Park? If yes, then comment below. If you like today's video, hit the like and subscribe button. We're committed to releasing two videos each week, so your support means a lot. We'll see you in the next video.